Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagined. Let's talk about one of my favorite aspects in any art form, including my own, and that's light. I love looking at light from various sources in various ways. I love the colors of light, how it affects a three-dimensional object, the shadows that are cast, the glow that can occur in nature. Light is mesmerizing to me and it calls back to my roots as a performer on stage. Seeing those brilliant shafts of light illuminate a subject on the stage and how it helps to tell the story of that moment in time is so utterly fascinating to me. So naturally, in my work as a photographer and a Photoshop artist, I'm constantly finding ways to add colorful, powerful elements of light into the scene. Today, we're going to take the first look at a powerful new plugin for Photoshop that augments your image with either a beautiful glow of light and color or can add streaks of light to create that truly magical element to finish your artwork. The plugin is called Oniric and it was created by a truly brilliant artist, Mario Olvera. You can follow his artwork by visiting his Instagram account below. He is the founder and CEO of Composite Nation, the company that has produced Oniric and has other powerful plugins on the way. To learn more about Oniric after you're done with this video, visit compositenation.com to see the trailer for the plugin, read testimonials from some amazing artists in the industry, and pick up your copy of this powerful plugin for Adobe Photoshop. I've used Oniric on some of my fantasy and cosplay composite work, and the results are astounding, but I've been excited to use it in the second photography genre that I work in, which is gelled photography, specifically glamour work. And that is the subject that will be demonstrating Oniric for you today. Before we dive into Photoshop, I would love your help in growing this channel. If you like the content you find in this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. The likes let the audiences on the platform know that they can find great education in photography and Photoshop here on the channel. And when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos go live each week to this channel. Your support means the absolute world to me and I thank you for it. And now let's hit the Photoshops and dive in to Oniric. Let's make a brief introduction. This amazing model, her name is Katarina Keen, and you can see more of her work by following the Instagram account at the link below. To get us started in Oniric, we need to talk about what it looks for in the image, and that's light. And specifically, it's going to look for the strongest points of light within the image, and then kind of cascade out from there to be able to create the different effects. So when I put this image through retouching, both the Adobe Camera Raw, frequency separation, dodging, burning, and so forth, I gave the image a little bit more light into the scene than I typically would for my artistic process. And I did that because I wanted Oniric to have more to be able to work with within the image itself. I'm gonna take us through Oniric today, show you the different elements and functions that I would do for this image. But once we're done with this video today, I do encourage that you visit another YouTube channel. A brilliant artist, his name is Dustin Volkema. He was a beta tester of this program since the beginning. He's not only an amazing Photoshop artist, he's a great 3D renderer, a great human being, and he has a wonderful tutorial that just launched today on his channel that takes another deep dive into Oniric and its functions. So once you're done here today, look at the description below and that will link directly Directly to the tutorial on his channel. So I'm going to click generate to get us started here in Oniric and what it's going to do is take us out of our basic workspace and convert this image from 16-bit into 8-bit and simply it does that because it will be able to work faster and function more quickly with the image itself because it's doing a lot under the hood in Photoshop to create these different effects. So at the top of Oniric here we have two options either they're bloom or light streaks. The bloom is the glow and then the light streaks obviously are light streaks. So you can create a preset here if you want to. So if you're working on a series of images and you need to create one effect for all of them, create it on the first one, make the preset and save it here. These four functions, intensity, radius, threshold, and exposure, these will give you the different controls for Oniric and how you can affect the glow that you see into the scene itself. Right now, the effect is already there, but again, it's at the strongest point of light within the image. The hot spots on her forearm and on her hair because the light that was boomed above her was pretty close to her at this point within the scene. So to be able to see what Oniric sees for the light mask and the luminosity mask, I'm going to come down and click X-ray, and that's going to show show us this luminosity mask and where it's functioning. Again, we can see the strongest points of light within the image are on her forearm and on her hair at this point. So to increase what Oniric sees within the image, we need to change the threshold here. It's at 0.25 and I'm going to increase it to roughly around 0.5. There we go. When I do that and let go, it re-renders the luminosity mask so we can see more of the image and more of her body. But at the top here on her forearm and on her hair, it's significantly brighter because it's letting Oniric see more of that light data. So 
if we run Oniric with these settings here, it's going to create the hottest spot in the image on her forearm. And that could drive the audience's focus to that point because people viewing artwork tend to look at the brightest point within the artwork. I don't want them to look directly at her forearm. I want them to take in the whole scene itself. So one of the powerful elements of Oniric is it gives you the ability to create a mask. So you can control where Oniric sees light within the image and how much of that light it sees beyond just the threshold slider that we just used. So I'm going to come here and click mask and it's going to enable us to paint a quick mask into this scene. So I'm going to paint uh, with my, I use a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet and it does pressure sensitivity, but I want to use a full flow of a brush. So I'm going to hit shift and zero to make sure that my brush is painting at 100% and I'm going to paint around the scene where I want it to pick up 100% of the effect itself, which is going to be pretty much everywhere within the image except her forearm, her hair, and a little bit of her face. So we'll make sure we get it all the way down across her body, and then I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger to make sure that it's covering the entire area of her body because we may want to be able to play with a threshold slider to let Oniric pick up a little bit more light data within the scene. Now that I've given the mask 100% flow on it, I'm going to change the flow of my brush to 10%. Actually, let's go 5%. I'm going to hit shift zero and five on my keyboard and that will change the flow of my brush to 5%. And now I'm going to gently use my Wacom pen and touch these areas above because I know I don't want the mask to be fully affected here. I want it to be very minimal so that that way I'm controlling how hot or how bright that area is inside of Oniric. Okay, let's just paint a little bit more through there. I think that all looks pretty good. Maybe just a touch of that. And now I'm going to come and click Update Mask here, and that will update the mask and run Oniric. So now we can see the bloom everywhere else, the glow, but it's lessened up top. It isn't as powerful up there, which is key, because now the audience's focus hopefully will take in the entire scene itself. I can increase the threshold just a little bit more. Let's go to like uh, 0.65. Yeah, I like that. I like this overall glow. I think it looks good, but I want to see more of it. The threshold is let Oniric see the light data so it can create the effects, but now I want those glows to be brighter. The intensity is already set to 100%, but I'm going to increase the exposure. And when I do, let's go up to like 30, 28 is fine. It's increasing it just a bit more. And this is what I love about this plugin. It's not a one and done. It isn't something where you just click it and it goes magic glow, magic light streaks, magic, 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 and then it's done. You have so much control over this. But more importantly, you have control within the plugin itself, but when it's done and it outputs it to its own layer, it makes it a smart object so you can bring it back into a near and edit it further if you want to, but it also comes with a layer mask. So you can work with the other layers that you can create in Oniric, different elements of different glows and other areas, and put them all together to really create a beautiful result. So for today's video, we're just going to do the glow and the light streaks themselves and get it to a nice property. But Oniric has so much potential, and not just for portraits like this and gel glamour. It can be used in composites, which I've used it in the composites, as I said, but you can be used in all kinds of portrait photography. If you're photographing, let's say, a high school senior in a prom dress in a beautiful ballroom somewhere, you're going to set your lights to expose on the kid that look good so that the light isn't too powerful on them. But a consequence of that action is that the ballroom itself could be a little bit darker. Maybe it's got a big, beautiful chandelier with natural light into the scene cascading from that. If you used Oniric on that chandelier, you're going to create a beautiful cascading glow that has wonderful color in it. If there's uh, candelabras or sconces on the wall, you can create the little light streaks on them that will add a little bit more of that magic to the scene. If you're a product photographer, you're photographing products or let's say a car, you're photographing a car, you can see those glows from the, the headlamps or the, the glows of specular highlights on the metal of the car itself. The possibilities are truly endless. So let's continue this, this glow here and then we'll go into the light streaks themselves. So threshold is good. Exposure, I like this overall look and effect. If I increase the radius, it's simply just going to stretch out the glow itself. And I don't want to do that. I want it to be pretty localized to the hot spots within the image because I paid great attention to that when I did the dodging and burning itself. So at this point, I think this overall glow looks good. Let's increase the exposure just a touch more. 
And let's see, I like that result. I think that looks pretty good. Everything's great there. I do wanna point out one final thing before we hit apply and go back into Photoshop. You do have the ability to colorize the effect itself. So I don't want that for this piece, but let me demonstrate what it does. If I click colorize, it's going to turn the entire glow into one color. And that's key and essential. Now, I'm not going to do it for Gel Glamour because I chose the color palette on purpose. But if you were creating uh, magical effects, special effects, you're able to create a glow. And it isn't just picking one color. Yes, you have the ability here to change the hue to pick one base of a color. But it's cascading the color out based upon the luminosity values within the image. So you're getting subtle hints of other colors centered on that one that you selected. If you were to try to do outer glow in Photoshop the special effect that's built into the program you're picking one color and like you have to do so much more different layers and different effects to build up cascading colors that are very close to that one color that makes a realistic glow Oniric does it for you and lets you not only control how big it is, the color, the saturation, the, the light, the intensity of it, the threshold. It's it's a truly wonderful plugin. And trust me, under the hood, it is giving you so much that uh, it would just be very difficult and time consuming to do inside of Photoshop itself. I'm going to turn off colorize by simply clicking the button so that I can again get the glow based upon the original colors within the scene that I chose. So I'm going to click apply. It'll take us back into Photoshop now. It can potentially take a little while to do this, which is why it converts the image into 8-bit. And during the presentation, uh, it simply it was explained to us that it went into 8-bit because it functions a little bit faster on 8-bit images, but it will convert it back into 16-bit. If you have a pretty powerful, fast computer, the process can go a little bit faster. If your computer isn't as up-to-date, it may take a little bit longer. I promise you this is not a... Um, consequence or reflection of the plugin it is doing quite a lot under the hood to be able to create this effect and now that it's done we have our own layer here which is a smart object so if we wanted to take it back into oniric and start working on it all we would have to do is click edit element and as we build up more effects of oniric on one image more layers more smart objects when you click edit element it will give you a drop down where you can select the specific one that you want to work with but let's take a look at what this is so this top layer has all of this beautiful glow and color built into the scene and again with a layer mask I can start painting it away selectively in areas where I don't want it to be now for the glow I, I love the glow I love this base of it but let's generate the light streaks now so I'm going to click the background layer and again oniric will work on whatever layer you have selected it's not going to you don't have to make a composite layer of everything it only will work on the layer that you choose so now I'm going to click generate it'll take us back into oniric and then we'll take a look and see what the light streaks can do. So I'm going to go down to the type and switch to light streaks. And again, we'll see a little bit of an effect up top because that's the hottest part of the image. Let's go to X-ray so we can see the entire threshold map. I believe the threshold we used before was 0.65, I think. Uh, 6.4, that's fine. And now let's turn off X-ray. Look at that, like the, the light streaks, I, I, spoilers, I love this plugin. Like I've been working in Photoshop for years and I have never seen a plugin that can do this, that can create one, this stylized look, which is very unique to Mario Oliveira's style as an artist. And number two, give you all of these controls so that you can sit them and slide them around and create this beautiful effect in Photoshop. It's just, it's truly brilliant. So I love the light streaks, but again, this is what I was talking about earlier, that we have these really strong hot spots, and that would pull audiences focus if I left it just like this. This isn't a one and done process. This is something that we need to use those layer masks in Photoshop to be able to paint in this effect wherever we want to see it. So we can play around uh, when you have light streaks, you have two new controls, the rotation. So we can have the light streaks go up and down or whatever angle we want them to be. And then post blur right now, the light streaks are not that defined. They're not that strong. And that's something that I hope that continues to be iterated on in the plugin itself, um, because I would like to be able to see some more structured, very focused light streaks where we have one like strong core of light, the color cascades out and we can see those very defined streaks coming out. And I've been experimenting with Oniric and painting in different elements into my images to be able to give Oniric the ability to create those. And I've had some interesting results. So um, I can, of course, blur them out if I get too strong of a result, but that's not necessary here. If we increase the radius on this, it's at 20. Let's take it up to 44.5. That sounds like a good number we can see more of the light streaks themselves so that we really see that effect taking place. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit 
uh, to like 32. Uh, radius I would not mess with if I was doing uh, the glow because simply I just I want it to be the way it is. But uh, for the glow, but for the light streaks, increasing the radius lets us see more of it. And to point out up top, you have the ability right now, it's creating two streaks, one on either side of the glow. You can change it to four and you're going to get essentially the plus pattern of light streaks everywhere, which I think is such a unique look. And again, there's um, examples of this being used on a star field that's used in a composite all the stars just little dots everywhere within the scene when you do four streaks they all become these glittering twinkling beautiful stars within the image so i'm going to take it back to the two streaks themselves i don't want to do the four for this image itself but i'm excited to work with it in other images and other genres of photography so those streaks look pretty good the exposure looks pretty fine again this is not a one and done i could go back into the mask itself here and paint some of this away up top but i would rather just use the mask in photoshop because I know I want the glow for my artistic purposes. I want the glow that we initially created to be pretty prominent. I want the light streaks to be a minimal effect everywhere else. So again, looking at this, this is too much. But if I click apply, it's going to run the process. And again, this can take some time depending upon uh, how much you've put into uh, the different streaks or glows with an oniric, the speed of your computer and so forth. It is not a reflection of the plugin. The plugin is doing a lot under the hood in Photoshop and adding a lot of different layers and elements combining them together to create this one layer with the final result that we see here. Now that this new element has been created at the top of the layer stack, I can simply come to the layer mask, uh, hit B for brush. I'm gonna change my flow to like 3%. And I'm going to paint black onto this layer mask and just begin to carefully take it away from the center of her body because I want the light streaks to be on the outer edges. I don't want it to be everywhere else. And it's revealing that glow layer beneath. So I'm going to take away that super hot spot up top because there's a glow there that I want to be seen, but I want those light streaks to be visible. And again, using a low flow of a brush, on the layer mask, I can just simply start painting it away and get very careful control of where those light streaks appear within the final piece of artwork. Okay, let's just take a little bit more right off the top of her eye up here maybe and a little bit down the core of her body. And I can come to the glow itself and do the same thing. I'm going to change the flow of my brush to 2%, going very minimal, and just begin to feather it away and take it away just a little bit so we begin to see some of the original information from the base image itself. So Oniric does so much. It's such a powerful plugin. And this is a beautiful result. And this has not been artistically enhanced. There's more that we can do to it, color grading details, other dodging and burning and light values, other things to finalize the look. And we can do that to the image before we put it into a Neuric or do it afterwards. And I'm, I'm incredibly excited to work with both uh, of those options and elements and see what we can produce. So let's let's talk about some final thoughts of the software and, uh, and the plugin itself. And then we'll finish up this video for today. Oniric is is, creating an artistic style, an artistic style that I have wanted in my artwork for years. And with all of my knowledge in Photoshop, I do not know how to produce this look. I can reverse engineer it and, and to a certain degree looking at it and I can, there's uh, ways that I have added glows and light streaks to, to my artwork for years. And some of those elements may very well be inside of Oniric, but I, I have no idea how to do this. And that it's all bundled into a plugin that gives me those different sliders and controls. That I can use it on gel glamour photography, on composite work, on regular portraits, on products, on, on elements like smoke and fog and sparks to create those real glows and add them into my artwork. The possibilities truly are endless. I highly encourage you to take a look at this plugin. And again, when you purchase it, it's a lifetime purchase. And as it continues to evolve and updates come along, you'll have access to that. So thank you for watching this video here today. Again, if you like the content, please hit like and subscribe to the channel. It will help me grow this channel on YouTube and let other folks on the platform know that they can find great education in photography and Photoshop here. Visit Dustin Volcomus channel. Visit that tutorial and take another deep dive into Oniric. Go to compositenation.com. You can see further tutorials there. You can see testimonials about it and then look at Oniric and see if it's something that you want to add to the mix. Thanks for going on this journey with me today. And until next time, I will see you out there in the world of Photoshop.